today we are going to talk about union operator in KQL and this is considered as one of the most costliest operator to use but today we'll understand how we can use it efficiently and effectively now the way union works it it basically works on a tabular structure where we can have multiple data sets and we can apply a kind which is defaulted to outer or we can also do inner to get the common columns and we can add a parameter as bit source with a particular column name which will be identified as a common column for the data sets or the tables and there are cases wherein if we specify multiple tables for unions and one of the tables might not be available or accessible so is fuzzy is a keyword we set it to true to make sure that we successfully run the query though the data set is not present now to see the example we will start writing union and the first data set which is sign in logs and we put a comma at the end and again in the next line we would say office activity just to apply the union on a bigger data set we will go back in time for last seven days and we run the query and we will wait for the query to complete and uh, show us the result and when the result comes up we should be able to see basically the result is combined within sign in logs as well as office activity right and just to validate that piece what we would do is we would go to the end of the query and add distinct type to ensure that it is capturing both the tables as you can see here now as a next query what do you do is just to make it more effective we would apply let's say distinct user principal name which is one of the columns we might need in our query and from office activity we would say distinct user id and close the bracket and remove the type because we don't have the type anymore and we are going to run the query right now if you look at the output over here it basically does a union between two tables but doesn't bring all the data so it's more accurate and more specific now let's say if we want to find out something common within both the tables so for that case we would use kind and the default is outer but here we apply inner and also because we have applied inner the query expect one of the columns should be same or similar in both the data sets now to achieve that we would extend user id as user principal name in office activity so that both the data set should have a common column and once we run the query we should be able to see the result over here all right and uh, as you can see everything is coming under a single column now just to go for the further extension we would go and use with source and i would name it common column and what we would do is sign in logs and remove everything else so that we can get the entire table and remove the brackets as well because they are not needed anymore and at the end we would say distinct common column name and we run the query once again and we would see it's basically taking the column or table names from both the tables because those are something common between those tables for example each sign in logs will have address that they belong to sign in logs each office activity will uh, have uh, evidence that that belongs to office activities table 
Now with source common column, understand that and displays as the result, right? Now, just to make it a little further, what we would do is we would add another option called is fuzzy. And let's try to make it is fuzzy. And what I would do is start typing is fuzzy and equal to it's defaulted to false but we will set it to two and also delete the last line because we don't have common anymore and we would add a table we know it doesn't exist it's just to show you the demonstration all right now let us try to run the query right this red line is kind of a warning and let us try to see we actually have added something wrong so we'll delete that piece and rerun the query once again and uh, here we should be able to see that though this table doesn't exist you know there is no such table or data sets available the query still runs successfully and gives us the result right and uh, when you hover on that it basically shows us the op you know reason why there is an error in the query